Hi, Tony here. Welcome to the Man Cave and it's time to crack on with the front end of the T100 project. Now it's been a while since I put something out on the bike. There's been a lot of other stuff going on. The uh, tank that's going on here has gone off to paint. So hopefully in the next episode we'll be able to show you that tank. Get that back on. But it's time to start neatening up the front end. To get the ball rolling there's quite a lot of stuff that's going to come off here. So these gauges are going to come out. We've got a lay flat gauge mount for this. The headlight come out, we're going to change these arms. We're going to change the indicator. We move the headlight down. We're going to relocate the rectifier, the bars are coming off. So although this is very straightforward stuff to take out, I will whip through with cutaways to show you each of those bits coming off, but what I want to do is get to a stage where this front end is completely uh, stripped down, ready for all the new parts to go on. Then we'll spend a little bit more time showing you how those new bits go on and everything comes together. We can start with the headlights, because that is a straightforward 12mm bolt on either side. Uh, the headlight's got to come out eventually, so we might as well get this out as the first part. There's no particular order to do these in, but obviously if the headlight's out, you can gain access to the bolt to get rid of these huge, great big indicators. Don't forget behind this bolt, in between the headlamp and the arm, you've got this little spacer. Just be wary that doesn't drop away. And obviously there's a whole lot of wiring that goes into the back of the headlight here. Most of the, uh, the loom disappears into the back. So I'm just going to leave that dangling there for the time being whilst I'll get the rest of the bits off. The indicators are next and obviously with the headlamp out of the way, you can just get to this bolt. If you loosen that off, uh, you can then get that uh, wiring out once that's disconnected. But again, I'm just going to leave that dangling for the time being. Now again, there's no particular order to do these, but uh, you might as well take the speedos out. You've got these little 8mm on the back that hold the cases in place. So if you undo those, that will enable you to pull the case off of the back. And then the rest of that can come through. Now these may be a little bit tough, but it's just a case of pushing the tabs in. There's a rubber seal on that. You can take that out of the way and I'll take the rubber seal out and put that with it as well um, because I'll have to transfer that over to the other gauge mount. So as you can see when I've taken the uh, rev counter cover off, the plug is actually a different colour so there's no need to mark them up. Grey goes to the speedo, pink to the rev counter so there's no way you can confuse those when it comes to putting them back together and to uh, remove this gauge it is a case of just undoing these four bolts and so with those four bolts undone there the gauge mount comes off and just to give you a comparison I've got the replacement Motone flat mount and there you can see the difference in the profile of those two so the flat mount there puts the clocks much lower as you'll see we've got to move this headlight down to clear the clocks changing the ears on the arms means that we can push this headlight down a little bit lower and this also has a space for the ignition to go into now as most of the electronic gizmos are mounted inside the headlamp uh, to make this easier and more manageable I'm going to take uh, the front of the headlamp off to access all of the plugs and everything that's stored in the back of this and it is just the screws on the side here one either side loosen those off you can take the front off and then I can show you what's uh, inside once the headlight is unscrewed and then you can see all the gubbins in the back here and this is one of the problems you've got when you're working on modern bikes there's a whole host of stuff in here at last I've got those enormous great big indicators off and out of the way you're then left with this absolute spaghetti junction of crap here um, and I'm sure we can probably neaten up a little bit when it goes to getting that put back in uh, but with that out of the way all that leaves us to do to clear up is to get the controls off of the bars I've loosened the allen bolts on both sides of the bike here but there's normally not enough give in the cables to slide them off but obviously if you undo the clamp on the top of the bars you can move the bars from side to side to get them off on the clutch side you've got to get this grip off of the bar now the quickest way I found to do that is to stick a screwdriver up the end there squirt a bit of WD-40 and just work it round to get it stuck depends on if anybody's used any grip glue or anything like that on there but normally you can just work your way around and that's enough to loosen that off here. Yeah, grip will come off. 
but there you can see there isn't enough room to pull that off the top of the handlebar clamp is out of the way that just means we can move the bars to enable you to get both controls off of each side we'll lay them to one side those, cup, those bars can disappear and they'll be replaced with these moto bars and as I say I've got a different top clamp to go in there uh, so I'm hoping that we've got enough stretch to be able to get those in the right place yep that looks like that's going to be no problem now to get this top yoke off there's a pinch bolt here uh, which is an allen key on both sides and then you've just got this top nut I'm going to leave these in place there's no point in taking those off uh, then we can lift that off slide these off um, I'm taking the gaiters off as I mentioned before we're not going to replace those to really to take those off properly you've got to uh, take the bottom clamp as well I'll slide them off the bottom I'm going to cheat I'm just going to cut those off because I'm not going to put those I'm not going to want those on there um, which is a bit of a shortcut now it's a bit of a waste admittedly but it's going to be quicker and easier if you're not going to put those back on you know what the hell so this is the pinch bolt that I was talking about here 8 mil allen key and as you undo this you can see that gap opening up that just releases the grip that you've got on the top here if you do that on both sides you've then got this top nut to undo and boom that whole lot will come off this top nut on the yoke is a 30 mil nut which I've loosened off already so once that's off I'll put that there out of the way this is the point where you might want to put the bars back on just so you've got leverage to be able to lift that off uh, because this Although you've undone this pinch bolt, this is still going to be pretty tough to lift off. I'm up there, the top yoke's off. Now I've obviously got this clip here with these on which is weighing it down. So I'll undo this clip to free those wires. Now to get this clip off that holds that wire, it is just these two Allen bolts. Uh, and then that comes off uh, and it frees up this wiring. So it's just worth also making a note of what wires go through there uh, just so that you can put it back in the right place and with the top yoke out of the way if you just take that rubber seal off the top there is also a rubber seal at the bottom just a case of, of lifting that seal up off of here as well what I've done is the wires that were up in between the clip uh, I've just tucked around the back and these are the headlight arms that will be replacing them two pinch bolts on the inside that's just going to slide over the top here and that, that's going to enable us to mount the uh, headlight lower we've got that choice of where we want to move that before we fit these though I think I'm going to get the uh, rectifier relocated down out of the way here uh, but for the time being I'll just undo that and swing that out of the way and then we can cover off where that fits once we've got the top end back together 20 seconds of cutting with the scissors and it's good by gaiters and I think that actually makes a big difference that looks really nice uh, and it also means that we can get a cross brace sat on there as well potentially losing that mud guard I haven't quite decided yet now to relocate this rectifier you need to undo those, those two bolts there take the cable that's going to feed down and sit behind here and I've got another motor mount that sits where the horn is and that will take the horn and that rectifier and move that out of there so for the time being I'm just going to undo those two bolts get this down and out of the way right so we've got a pretty naked looking front end of the bike it looks a mess but obviously all of this is going to sit back in the headlight bucket now the rectifier's gone and we're going to be using that lay flat gauge bracket we can actually move the headlight a little bit lower down now when it comes to the indicators i've chosen to use uh, as this is a motone project bike the black motone indicators these are a really nice looking thing the arms are not too long you can get those fitted quite close to the bike now this is the point that you need to decide how you're going to mount those and there are plenty of brackets that will slide over the fork legs for you to mount these too. Once you put them on, if you put them down at the bottom, it often looks quite nice to mount them down by the, uh, the, bottom, of the, uh, by the, by the bottom yoke. But once they're all in place, it's then a bit of a pain to take it all off and move it if you decide that you wanted them up near the fork arms. That's why I have picked for this the Motone uh, indicator brackets because they are hinged uh, and the beauty of that is is you can put all the bike together and then you've got the ability to pop those on and decide where you want them to go so if you put them the, at the, right at the bottom there and think actually no I don't like that uh, you can unbolt that 
and move it up to the top and you can swap it around once all the bikes together so if you decide you want to change the indicators and go for something different you don't have to leave the mounts on if you decide to change that with the, you know you don't have to take the whole lot apart again just to take the mounts off you can just unbolt those take those away and mount the indicator somewhere else so these are a really good looking part but also very practical when it comes to deciding where you want to put your indicators. Right, so now the headlight mounts are in place, you can put the top yoke back on. Uh, now obviously you need to be able to run the cables back through. We've already established which ones of those need to run through. Uh, so I'll run those up through before I do this. Now because the bike has been supported and it's still on the front wheel, we've not had any movement in these full arms. So they, these will just push back on. In fact, you can see I can just kind of almost push them back on by hand. Now as I suggested it was pretty straightforward to put this top yoke on and just tapped it down with a rubber mallet around until it's on. The 30mm nut is back on the top yoke and you've got the pinch bolts at the side here to tighten up as well and I'll put the torque settings for those on the screen. I've run the cables up there for the left controls, there for the right controls and for the um, ignition which is going to go up underneath uh, the clocks. Next job is to put the flat gauge mount on and obviously being flat this could go up either way so a quick pointer you can see on the rings you've got a notch at the base unit and you've got a notch in the top. This notch in the base unit goes on the right hand side as you're looking from the bike. That is then quite simply a case of sitting it on the top and putting your four 8mm bolts back into place. In and then before we remount the speedometer, I'm just going to fit this ignition block in here. So here is that in place. A little bit of a quick fix, I've just put these two bolts up through here. Um, because there is no fixing point uh, in here, no threaded insert, I've run a bolt up through the inside here and just put a, a nylock nut on the top for now. Um, I'm going to get some longer bolts and I'll probably put a dome cap on that, a black dome cap just to make that look a little bit neater. But that does mean that we've got the ignition in place uh, and I think a much better place to have it than down uh, either on the uh, on which you've got stock or where this one was relocated down the side. I like to have the keys up there. The next job is nice and easy and that's just putting the rubber seals back in uh, and this is where you can see the notch that you've got in the top of the arm that I showed you earlier. There's a little section on the rubber there which means that you can put those in exactly the right place. So you can just sit those two rubber seals in place. Now obviously if you want to, you can put these around whichever way you want and then it's a case of feeding the wire up in the slot on the back of the pod until the prongs push through and then you can put the little dome cups back on and boom there you go. At some point I may well black out the chrome around the top of this but for the purposes of this video and for speed I'm just going to put them back. And this is the part now where it really starts to take shape because we can get the bars on and I'm also going to be using this which is the Motone top clamp. Really nice looking piece. Uh, it's better I think than the two individual stock ones. And so this is uh, just the same as before. You want to slide the controls onto the end of the bars so that you've got the room. When you're doing this it's important to make sure that you get these bars centralized so uh, just take a couple of measurements either side to make sure you've got those in the middle and then obviously the angle of the bars you can decide once it's all back together again whether you want them more upright or laid back a little bit but um, i think already that's looking a whole lot better than the stock setup right so we're at the point now where we can start to think about putting this back in the headlamp unit uh, we've got a couple of connections to make. You've got the, the two connections for the light itself. The key part is the indicators. And I've got a decision to make as to whether I, because I'm fitting these Motone indicators, just to give you an idea of how the size profile is going to change. There is the stock one. There is the Motone one. Um, but because I'm fitting these, which have got bullets on the end. I've got a choice of either cutting this cable and fitting an eyelet on here so I can push those straight into that, or I can 
cut the ends off of these, splice them onto the wires here and leave the stock wiring loom connectors as they are and then just push those in and connect them up. Uh, and I think I'm probably going to go down that route. Now I thought I'd take this opportunity just to very quickly show you how I splice these together. Now if you're used to working with uh, electrical uh, componentry, this would be a very simple, and it is a very simple job, but for those of you that are new to this and have not picked up any of this before, I thought I'd just show you how I splice these wires on. There's lots of ways you can do it. I'm going to connect these using these crimp connectors. Uh, these ones I've got uh, are slightly bigger than the connectors that they use on the Motone um, wires, but actually what I can do is just open these bullets up a bit. They're small, soft copper ones. So all I've done is just stick a spike in there and then just open that up a bit. It's not affecting the contact but it just means that that's now going to push tight and you're going to get a good connection and then obviously first job you need to do with these is to crimp the wire back i use a set of these electrical pliers uh, they've got crimps and cuts and bits on but i've just got a little section there which will take the sleeve off it's easier than trying to cut it with a knife because uh, you don't risk cutting through the, the wires themselves i'll just twist those and i'll turn the end over a fraction just to thicken it up and then I'm just going to want to use one of these crimped ends so there you go that wire will sit in this first tab is to hold it then the next one is where you crimp it and then using a pair of these electrical crimpers uh, you've got a little sort of W shape in here uh, which just allows you to go over the top and crimp that in nice and tight that's good to hold that and then you've just got the next piece there that crimps and holds the wire. So that holds the wire in place. And there you go, there's that job done. Okay. And then it's just a simple case of plugging them together. But before you do that, I've got a little bit of heat shrink here. I seem to be having some focus issues, bear with me. Um, some heat shrink in here so that once I plug those together, I can just put that heat shrink over the top, cover over, uh, insulate that, and I'll get that. It uh, uh, just makes for, makes for a neater job. So, but just remember to put that on before you connect the wires. The amount of times I've connected them, and uh, it's not so bad when you're pushing them like this, but if you're soldering, it's a real pain then to forget that you put the heat shrink on. And then, with the heat shrink in place, I've got my heat gun. Make sure that all the metal is covered. There you go. That's got all the uh, metal conductive stuff covered over. And then this is ready to fit onto the bike and plug into the standard loom. Okay, now we've got everything else done. It's time to get the headlight bowl back on. We've got to get all this crap back through that hole into here uh, so I'm not going to make you sit through me doing that well as you can well imagine getting this lot through that hole is a bit of a ball ache and I haven't actually put uh, the rubber seal on the back yet either but that's because I've still got to run the cables through for the indicators once that's on there though that does mean that you can bolt these clamps into place uh, a little bit of wiggling around to get the headlight in the right position you can then Lift the arms up to get the headlight sitting where you want. I've got a reasonable gap there. Obviously then once you've got that done, you can just do up these screws on the inside of the arm to knit those up tight. Already it's looking better. I haven't got the front of the headlight on or the indicators. And I think in terms of the indicators, I'm going to mount them just below uh, the mount, or, or probably on the top of the bottom yoke. Okay, so it's time to get the indicator brackets on. You can see the way they're shaped that you've got a flat section here for that to sit flush to and you've got a recessed section here and that's for the threaded sleeve that comes in the, in the kit that just neatly goes in there and tightens up and fixes this. Now you get two versions of this in the kit. You get a 1.25 and a 1.5 pitch thread. The Motone lights are a 1.5 so it is a case of Get in the bracket on the bike, feed the wires through, 
which is why I've left them nice and long because obviously with those plugs on they're a little bit more difficult to get through then the indicator will mount on there you've then got to feed the sleeved part through make sure you get that round the right way so that you don't get to the end and then find you've put it on back to front and have to take it all off again that goes in there and you can see this then screws it goes into that recess nicely they're your indicators uh, and I think in a really nice position and then just feed the wires through and plug them in at the back I'm going to go and put the other one of these on the other side, feed the wiring through, get the headlamp in and then you can have a look and see what a difference this has made to the front end of the bike. So there you go, uh, I think already looking much neater, I've still got the regulator to do so I'll do that for you in a second, but with everything bolted up uh, I think it looks much lighter and open and neater, you haven't got those huge indicators sticking out, I imagine when this uh, headlamp is done in black that's going to tie that all in together, it's just a much smarter look. I've still got to sort the grips out so uh, I'm probably going to put a set of built world grips on, I do like uh, a number of their grips and then we can start looking at bar end mirrors or uh, end caps or whatever we're going to do. I guess to keep this in the desert sled mode I may well not put a rear view mirror on it, I don't know yet. Now there will be a few other changes to this front end as we go along but hopefully this has been useful for you to show you what you can do with the front end when you consider what it did look like to what it looks like now I think it's an improvement not everybody's gonna like it a lot of people like that classic style and that's fine it's horses for courses your bike your rules uh, but I like this stripped down look right to finish off uh, we've got this bracket here which is the relocation bracket so all you need to do undo the 10 mil bolt which holds the horn in place you replace that horn with this bracket, I'll just put that on there loosely and, and then the horn bracket itself will go onto the nut that's on the back of this at the bottom you can see you've got a, uh, a bolt that's fitted in a bit fiddly to get to but that is where you can put the horn just in case of undoing these two nuts I'm doing this very loosely for the time being just to show you what's going on if we undo those two and the regulator can pop onto that, bolt those on. So once you've got everything tightened up, it's a pretty neat finish, a very simple bracket, but very effective, just gets this neatly up against the frame, horn underneath. It's still an ugly thing, but at least it looks better than it does here. Well, there you have it, uh, a big transformation. As I say, a few bits and pieces to tidy up, but I'm not a big fan of the chrome headlight. In a later video I'll put the cross brace on and that may well mean that I'll lose this front mud guard and the bracket that goes underneath that. Not sure yet, we'll just see how that pans out. But you know, the neat indicators, the side arms, this flat gauge and the bars make a huge difference. Still got the grips to go on. It's difficult to really get an idea of what it really looks like until the tank goes on. And I'm not going to put the black original tank back on it because coming up soon I will be able to reveal the Motone tank that's going to go on there. You've seen the Motone tank in its aluminium form. Uh, the tank has gone off to my good friends at the paint box. They've done some work on it. I've seen it. It looks fantastic. The pinstriper is coming in soon to do the lettering on the tank. So it will be nice to reveal that tank when I can put that on and the seat and show you what that looks like. Uh, but we're getting there. We've still got the tyres to change. We've still got a uh, quite a few bits and pieces. I've got a bash plate to go on, the exhaust to sort out, uh, rear lights, there's a, a whole host of stuff still to go on the project but we're getting closer each time and uh, it's getting quite exciting. So as usual I'll put some links up in the corner for you to go away and find the parts that I've used on here. Uh, there'll be some links in the end credit including a subscribe button if you want to hit that that would be fantastic and until next time all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.